Companies can create value either by increasing willingness to pay uh, among a target customer segment for uh, products or services, or by dropping the cost required to provide those products and services. But how do you know if a company has a cost advantage or cost disadvantage? Well, to talk that through, we're going to uh, use the example of Emirates Airlines uh, and uh, walk through some of the financials that you could find in their uh, income statement and balance sheet. So the first thing you want to do is find the most granular drivers of operating costs that are available, right? So if you just look at total operating costs of a company, it's not nearly as informative as understanding what are the components of, uh, of those operating costs, in this case, employees or handling or uh, in-flight catering, uh, because those that more granular data, of course, gives you insight into what are the choices the company has made that's driving their costs down or driving their costs up. So uh, the most granular data you can find on the drivers of operating costs uh, are what you want to use. This, the second thing you want to do is normalize those costs for comparison. So just seeing a number, 177 million uh, for employees, for instance, in isolation doesn't tell you much, right? You'll want to compare a company's uh, operating cost drivers to its competitors. But to do that, you have to control for you know how many flight, how big they are, how big their revenues are, how many airplanes in this uh, in this industry uh, they have. So you need to normalize, and and there are two you know there are several ways you could do that, but probably the two most common are uh, first to express the costs as a percentage of revenue. So it's a very simple calculation. You just take the operating cost uh, line item and divide it by overall revenues or revenues of that segment of the business. You know the airline uh, business. Um, so that's the obvious one. Another one you can do is to uh, normalize those costs per unit of capacity. So in the airline industry, uh, you might, for instance, a common uh, measure that you might use is revenue passenger kilometers flown. So it's a, um, a measure of how many miles the airline is able to fly with passengers in, in seat. Um, and, and that, um, the, the unit, of course, will vary by industry. It would be different in uh, the cruise industry, it would be different in the auto industry. But in, in broad strokes, normalization, dividing by revenues or dividing by unit. Once you've done that, then you can compare your focal company's uh, uh, performance on those cost drivers relative to appropriate benchmarks. Now, appropriate is the key word in this title. You really need to think about what is a fair comparison, what is an informative comparison for my focal company. So in the case of Emirates, you know, do we want to compare them to low-cost airlines, Ryanair, EasyJet? Um, uh, do we want to compare them to traditional flag carriers that are focused within a single country? Do we want to focus them on more globally-minded airlines that might have a global hub-and-spoke system like uh, Singapore Air or Cathay Pacific? So it's, it's important, as always, when um, uh, when making comparisons, trying to assess relative com uh, uh, advantage in costs or disadvantage in costs, to think about what is an appropriate, what is a fair, what's an informative comparison to make. Uh, third, you want to explore trends over time. Uh, so, you know, if you look at the data for a single year, who knows? Maybe it was an off year. Maybe fuel and oil prices were really high that year because uh, the raw, you know, the cost of oil went up. So, it's useful to look at a, a, a longer time series, and that allows you to do a couple of things. One, it allows you to see how things are trending over time. So, are costs creeping up or are they creeping down? Uh, two, it helps you to see if a company's consistent in its cost advantage or cost disadvantage, right? So, if you see, for instance, that in handling charges in catering, um, that Emirates it, it does well relative to its competitors, is it doing well every year? Because if it's doing well every year, it suggests that they have a capability that allows them to keep those costs low. If it's jumping up and down, less consistency, less clear evidence of a, a cost-cutting, cost-discipline capability that they can maintain and will be able to maintain into the future. Uh, Finally, it's, it's really important to think not only about the operating costs that appear on the income statement, as line items on the income statement, but also capital efficiency. How much money is a company spending, and this is primarily true in capital intensive industries, how much money is a company spending for the capacity that it needs to generate its revenues and, uh, and profits, right? So uh, one useful measure of this is uh, PPE, uh, property, plant, and equipment per unit of capacity. And this has a couple of advantages. Uh, so first of all, it includes capacity uh, no matter how you acquired it. So it could be, you know, in the case of, um, uh, in, in the case of Emirates, that they acquired the planes new from Airbus, 
Okay. Uh, it could be uh, that they acquired the planes through an acquisition of another airline and, and inherited some planes with those. Um, you know, if you go think back to the Tesla case, it could be that they, they built a plant from scratch, the Giga factory. It could be that they acquired a factory through, again, an acquisition of a company that had capacity. So uh, PP&E is nice that in as much as it, it captures capacity, regardless of how you acquired it. Um, it's also... Uh, you know, it tends to be a little more reliable than the sort of sticker price, the announced price for capacity, because those prices often exclude uh, things like uh, penalties for late changes or discounts that are unannounced. Um, so they often don't provide a, a, um, a full and completely accurate picture of how much a company is, is spending on capacity. Uh, so PPE per unit of capacity can be a, a helpful metric. Uh, when you're thinking about unit of capacity, again, it'll vary by industry, right? So if you're in the steel industry, you'll want to look at PPE per ton of capacity production, for instance. And by the way, this is just important to note that you wouldn't look at PPE per factory because factories, you know, you could have a small factory, you could have a big factory, and they vary a lot in terms of how much steel they could produce per year. Uh, so it, it's probably better in those cases to look at, you know, something like ton of capacity production that controls for the size of, uh, of the factory or, you know, the ship in the case of Carnival. Another way to get at uh, unit of capacity is to think about units sold. Uh, so in the airline industry, it might be PPE per seat. Uh, that you're able to, uh, you, you know, to, to sell as Emirates Airlines. Uh, in Tesla, it might be PPE per car uh, produced, uh, another uh, way to think about units. So anyway, as you're thinking about costs, the, the key point to bear in mind, yes, of course, you want the operating costs you see on the income statement, but it's also worth uh, in capital intensive industries looking at uh, capital efficiency as well.